Boys and girls, we're gonna talk about donkeys today. Donkeys are all over the Bible. Look at these wee friendly donkeys. You think I could jump on one? <laughs> no way. They know what I'm too heavy for them. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, I didn't get all the donkeys back. I tried to chase them up the feet and I just scattered. But maybe someday I'll get all the donkeys back. Let's sing a few songs. It's a lovely Sunday morning. It's just seven, eight weeks. It's almost like the summer holiday. It's all over and the good thing is they haven't even started yet. Okay? Seek ye first. Okay, let's sing another one, and now we're gonna go for Shine Jesus Shine. <laughs> Grace and 
gaze on your kingly brightness, your faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Sunday schools and school assemblies. We've got, we're getting contact with like people from people from many parts of the world, from Canada, from Brazil. They're watching in away across. We've got into Europe. We've got Poland and Lithuania. We've got uh, Australia and also below China is the Philippines. And we've people checking in from there as well. And also some people from Uganda and some people from Kenya. To so many parts of the world with the World Wide Web, using YouTube, it's a fantastic way of literally doing what the Lord Jesus said by going into all the world and preaching the gospel to every creature. And we're going to pray just now and ask 
I'm going to ask God to give me help to live, to speak, and also for you to listen. Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to do Sunday school for the children. But thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to reach right into the homes with the precious message of God's word. And help me tell the story today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A lovely verse, uh, it's in today's story, and it says, The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. In Numbers chapter 22, 38. And there's a simple lesson, boys and girls, when you are a Christian, the Spirit of God lives within your life and within your heart, and He prompts you to speak at the right time to the right people. So maybe your friends or your family, and all of a sudden you want to speak to them about God or about the Bible, uh, and you wonder what to say. Well, the Bible says God will give you the words. But that's why it's important to learn the Word of God and to listen to Bible stories and to read the Word of God. So when you have it in your heart, God will bring it to your memory. And that's why it's so important. And the Word that God put it in my heart, we just don't want to say our own words. But we want to speak the words that God will want us to say. That will I speak. And that's a lovely word just to think about in Numbers 22, 38. The word that God putteth in my heart, that is the, that shall I speak. And we're going to share this story with you today, all right? Now, we're going to talk about the talking donkey. Donkeys are a wonderful animal. We showed you at the start just what a wee donkey looks like. And when I was a wee boy, of course, I've told you before, I used to, we used to have a donkey with my brother, all six brothers. And we used to love sitting in the donkey, jumping in the donkey's back. And quite often the donkey, he would see us coming home from school and we jumped in the donkey's back and we would, he would head straight for the hedge. And if he didn't buck you off before that, about three seconds max, he would go straight to the hedge. And just before he got to the hedge, his head went down, his bum went up, and he went straight into the hedge. And you can never, ever, uh, unless the donkey was trained, it was so hard to get used to that. But as little boys at primary school, that was always good fun. Now, so there are many animals in the Bible that God spoke to and God used. And that's why the Bible for me is the most fascinating book in the world. I don't need to read any other books when you've got the Bible because it's a library of 66 different books. Remember Jonah and the whale? God's, the Bible says God prepared a great big fish. A whale spoke to it and said, go and swallow my friend Jonah. And after three days, spit him out over to Nineveh. Remember that little fish that Peter caught? How did they know to pick up a coin? God spoke to the fish. Go to the bottom of the ocean of the harbour. Pick up a little coin. Pick it up. And swim to the top, and you're going to see a shiny hook. Uh, bite onto that hook. And Peter took the, the coin and paid the tax for the Lord Jesus for that day. And then, of course, there's the one about the snake. Whenever the serpent entered into the snake, or the devil entered into the serpent, which was a snake, and tempted Eve to, and Adam and Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God said, Don't touch it. And of course, the, the devil hated God, and he thought, if I can break the connection between God and people, I've won. Because unless they believe in God and trust in God, they're on my side. And boys and girls, that's why it's so important. Because the Bible tells us, uh, we have got a choice. I've set before thee life and death, therefore choose life. Life's not just about this life living on this earth. It's about everlasting life. Life together with God forever. So right now, we've got to repent and tell God we're sorry for all our sin that we have done, that we're due, and that we're born with, and ask him to forgive us, and God will come back to us, and the Spirit will live within our hearts. Wonderful. And then, boys and girls, there's a story we told on Friday about the cattle. Whenever lots of whenever God, uh, the, the Philistines, they took the Ark of the Covenant, and everything was going wrong for them, and they were told to put the ark back and get two cows and take their newborn calves from them. And if they walk straight, uh, it's a sign that we're, that we're not supposed to keep this because God's going to punish us. And that was unnatural because these cows never carried a cart before. They should have kicked it and went mad. And not only that, when you take calves from a newborn baby cow, the cow will go ballistic and will go mad to reach its little calves. But the moment they were harnessed, the Bible says they walked straight and they didn't turn to the left or to the right. And they, they cried after their little ones. They moved after them, but they never turned back because God was in that situation. Amazing story 
And then, of course, my friend Elijah, for two years he was hiding by the brook Cherith, by the tree, all the soldiers looking for him. King Ahab couldn't find him. Why? Because God hid him. And every morning and night, the crows, the blackbirds, the ravens, they are the ones that brought fresh bread and fresh meat every morning and every evening just for Elijah because God spoke to them and they obeyed. Then, of course, there's the famous lions with Daniel. And as Daniel's praying, God says to the, to the lions, don't touch my friend, Daniel. And all night long, these mad eating lions, they never touched Daniel. Why? Because God said to the lions, don't touch Daniel. Then there's this one. Some people think the talking donkey is direct. Do you know most movies in the world today? Do you know where they get their ideas and their inspiration from? Often it's from stories in God's word, the Bible. Because the original talking donkey is not Shrek. It's in the Bible. Yes. Book of Numbers 22 to 24 covers three chapters. Covers this amazing story about uh, the talking donkey. Right. This is a donkey. Lovely little animal. There's mules, there's horses, there's donkeys, all sorts of little animals you can, you can ride on, you can carry your things, you can have grazing in your fields. A very interesting little animal. Wonderful little animal. This is a baby donkey, a little colt. You know, amazing, we're going to finish up by telling you about what happened to little colt. These little animals, they need to be trained to walk in them. But the main story today is Balaam's donkey. Balaam was a prophet of God. Remember in the Old Testament, they never had the Bible to direct them. But God would speak to prophet, prophetesses, prophets, and, and say, take a message to the people. And the king at that time was called Balak. And outside, um, coming towards the city, were the group of Israelites, the, the people of God, the children of God. And these people were threatened. And they thought, if they come here, they're a big group of people. They'll try to overthrow me. And overtake the city. So this is the man of God, Balak. And the king says to his people, go to Balak and tell him to put a curse on the children of Israel. But he said, I cannot do that. I'm a man of God. I would never curse people, especially God's people. And he only want good to come of them. And he refused. But the king, the king then said, I've got an idea. What about money? What about money that you can never see the end of? Gold, silver, whatever you need. And boys and girls, it's amazing how many people will be persuaded because of money. And God forbid him. Yes, he done the right thing. He said, I'll go and pray about it. God says, don't go. Certainly don't go and curse my people. They're my people. I want them to be blessed, not cursed. But they, what all night long he thought, perhaps I can go off in the night. I can curse them and I can come back in the morning. And nobody will know that I've even gone. Boys and girls, do you think the donkey knew what he was going to do? Of course the wee donkey did. The Bible says, but God told Balaam, do not go with them. Don't go. Boys and girls, even the wee donkey. The wee donkey refused. Look, he didn't want to go. Because the wee donkey knew there was something wrong and he was cross because he wanted to go all night, curse the people and come back again. The Bible tells him about how cruel he was and he beat the donkey. But what actually happened? You see, the donkey saw something. That Balaam did not see. Does anyone know what it was? Yes, he couldn't understand. Why did this donkey talk to him? Why did the donkey not move? The donkey's always walked. Never talked. Always walked. But now it's talking and not walking. It sounds strange. Almost fine, sounds funny. But what happened? Well, this is about Balaam and his little donkey. Because Balaam took off at night. And he took off across the little country road. Nobody, everyone was sleeping. And he was going to put a curse on the people. Thought he could come back, thought God never knows. God won't know. Does God sleep? God never sleeps. The Bible says God, the eyes of God go to and fro throughout the whole earth. And boys and girls, you know what happened? Do you see the donkey stop? And Balaam got so angry, the Bible says he began to beat the donkey. Three times he beat the donkey. Then the donkey squashed his foot, his foot against the wall. And he was so angry, his foot was stuck in the wall, he couldn't get off the donkey. And the donkey just stood there squeezing his foot against the wall. And he began to beat the donkey. See, donkeys, donkeys are very stubborn animals, boys and girls. One day our little donkey broke out, and I, we would hope off to get it, pull it. Seven wee boys couldn't pull the donkey. Even when dad brought his car around to tow it, 
and put a rope around the donkey's neck and a rope around the tow bar and say, right, Dad, go. Stop. He says, why? I says, donkey's head's going to fly off. Donkey didn't move. Then we took the rope off and the donkey just starts walking. Oh, oh, yes. But the donkey never moved and he was so angry and he got it beat and beat and beat the donkey. Suddenly, the donkey says, why? Why are you beating me? And he was so mad he never even said, did he just talk to me? He said, if I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you. Boys and girls, this is a man of God, supposedly. But you know what happened? You see, the thought of money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And he thought he's going to be a wealthy man if he just goes and does a wee job and comes back again. And now God says to the donkey, stop walking. Don't take him anywhere. But there's also a reason why the donkey stopped. You know why? Because God sent an angel. And the man couldn't see the angel. But the donkey could. And the donkey stopped. And the donkey said, why are you beating me? All my life I've carried you. Your family, when I'm tired and you're tired, I keep walking. When I'm hungry, you won't give me food because you need to go somewhere. All my life, I've walked for you. I've worked for you. I've never let you down. Now I'm saving your life. Why are you beating me? And the man said, I would kill you if I could. But then God allows the angel to be seen by the man. Now everything's different. What does he do? Bible says he falls to his knees and he begs for mercy because the angel says, if you take one step more, I am going to kill you with my sword. And he begs for mercy. And the angel told him, you will not go and curse those people. God told you not to go. Now you're trying to sneak off in the night time to curse them. But it's not going to happen. And why are you beating the little donkey? And I don't think, boys and girls, you even said sorry to the donkey. Even though the donkey was the one who saved his life. You see, you remember the talking donkey, the story of Balaam, and he tried to sin, he tried to do wrong, and God told them not to. And that's when the verse comes in, when God give, God said, go to the people and speak to them and only tell them the words that I tell you to tell them. But he went off on his own accord just to get the money, just to be rich. And the angel that day, if he would have taken a step forward, and would have killed him. And God uses a simple little donkey as the one to save the man's life. So saved by a donkey. So if sometimes you see boys and girls, if, if I was to drive past you on your house and a big black or big black stallion horse or a beautiful big white horse, you'd go like, wow, such a beautiful horse. But if I drove past your rode past your house and a wee donkey, you'd go, ha 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 ha, look at another donkey, you would laugh your head off. Because I'm on a wee donkey. Yet this is a donkey that God is speaking about. And here's the saved by a donkey because the angel would have killed the prophet if they had taken one step more. Do you remember that? How the donkey saved the man's life even though he almost beat it to death so, so, so much. So was a cruel, cruel man called Balaam. And then moving on, boys and girls, to close off. Uh, we're not too sure about this. But the Lord Jesus, before he was born, Mary and Joseph had to make an 85 mile journey to Bethlehem from Nazareth. Now that's a long journey. They were not wealthy. Wealthy people have, would have owned horses and carts and, and there was no transportation like cars and aeroplanes or helicopters. You either walked by foot or went by donkey. Now it says that Mary was about to have a baby. I would imagine Joseph would have taken her a little donkey. Because it's a long way to walk if you're about to have a baby. But boys and girls, you see whenever they got to the inn, the stable, there was no room. No room in the inn for Mary or Joseph or especially the Lord Jesus. And that's like most people today. They don't have room for Jesus. This man had a little bit of sympathy. Yes, grind the back, clear the straw away. And that night, Jesus was born. How much time do you have for Jesus? You see, people today have no room in their homes, no room in their lives. What a wonder if you got room in your heart. And sometimes the world needs to stop still just to give us time to think of we got room for Jesus. Room for school, room for business, room for holidays, room for food, room for fun. That's all fine. But have your room for Jesus.
That's the only important question, boys and girls. Remember the verse we were telling you about, and it talks about, I've set before you life and death, therefore choose life. That's life with God. That's life forever with God. We're just passing through this life. We hear about death and dying every day. But whenever you die, that's it. But where will you spend your life? The afterlife, the life of God. But this we do know. The Lord Jesus, just before he died, he's standing outside Bethany, just outside Jerusalem. And he says, go and get me a colt. That's a little donkey. And it says, no man ever rode that donkey before. And that tells me, if anyone gets on that donkey, it's going to buck them off. Because it's not trained. But the Bible says the moment the Lord Jesus sat on that donkey, nothing happened. He just walked. And I thought, what did he do? He took immediate control of it. That's what he done. And boys and girls, the picture is simple. When, whenever, we, whenever we trust in the Lord Jesus and ask him to forgive us and to save us, you know what he does? He takes control of us. And he trains us. He teaches us where to walk and how to walk. See, a donkey's wild by nature. It will run. If you say go straight, it turns left. If you say turn right, it goes straight. But when Jesus sat on the donkey, where he wanted it to go, it went. Where he will lead me, I will go. And boys and girls, that's a challenge. Are you like the wee donkey? Are you submissive to God or rebellious, temper, anger? All these things. And boys and girls, you see, some donkeys in the world today, on their back, you'll notice there's even a cross. And that's a reminder that this wee animal was the very animal that God chose to ride into Jerusalem. So whenever you see a wee donkey, just a normal little donkey, just like this wee boy's riding, you remember, that's the animal God chose to ride. He didn't choose a lion or an elephant or a big black stallion or a big white horse. Or a tiger? No. He chose a wee donkey. Why did he choose a donkey? So that he could get all the glory. So the focus would not be on the animal. And I thought that wee donkey is carrying Jesus. And he probably thought he could have used it. He could have chosen someone bigger. Someone stronger. Someone wealthier. But he chose me, the wee donkey. And boys and girls, you might think God loves people who are richer, taller, smarter, more beautiful, more handsome. He doesn't. Because the Bible tells me, and it's just a beautiful word, it tells me that God is no respecter of persons. He, does, he treats everyone equal. No matter who you are or where you are, how old you are, how young you are, how big, how small, it doesn't matter. And I thought if God could choose the wee donkey, to, and that's all he wants us to do, the wee donkey's job, all it had to do was to carry Jesus. I'm like a donkey for Jesus. All I want to do is carry the message of Jesus to you. I wonder what do you, what do you want to do with your life? Is carrying the message of Jesus important? Is living for Jesus important? Is letting him take control to guide you, to steer you, to correct you? Sometimes they're not pleasant. You see, God had to speak to Balaam, and it's not pleasant. Our ways are not God's ways, and God's ways are not always our ways. So God was pleased, Jesus was pleased to use a wee donkey what can he do with your life and my life if you just let him do that? All right? We're going to sing our last wee song. Um, let's find a wee song, folks. Um, what's the song? I am a sea. Do you remember that one? Let's go. Think about the words. Let's spell it out. I am a sea. I am a sea. I am a sea. I am a sea. I am a and I just see H R I S T in my H E A R T L O L I D E T T E R N A L O Y. I am a C. I am a C H. I am a C H R I S T I A N. And I have C H R I S T in my H E A R T L O L I D E T T E R N A L O Y. I am a C. I am a C H. I am a C H R I S T I A N. And I have C H R I S T in my H E A R T M I L O L I D E T T E R N A L O Y. I am a C. I am a C H.
right worksheet? Do we have a worksheet? Yes, of course we got a worksheet about the donkey. Okay, here it is. We're going to look at it. Page view. And we're going to go double page. Okay, the talking donkey. And it's got that, the, the verse. The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And it's got a maze. And a wee box that says to a column. So the idea is to get these in to me by tomorrow. And we're going to have a really good day tomorrow. I've got a big plan, a big competition. So make sure you tune in. So thank you for joining us for Sunday School. We're going to pray. Father, we just thank you for the boys and girls. We thank you for every one of them for tuning in. And we pray, Lord, you'll bless them, each one, today. Help us, Lord, to think about God. To be like, to be like um, the wonderful characters in the Bible who loved you and served you. And sometimes, Lord, you had to teach them what it meant to do wrong, to correct them, to bring them back to the truth. Watch over all the doctors and nurses and people, Lord, today, helping to save people's lives. Bless the families today, mums, dads, grannies, grandas, those people, Lord, who are living alone. We pray, Lord, especially to be with them. In your loving name we pray. Amen. See you tomorrow.